Hello everybody and welcome to South Mountain Creamery. This is another one of my little comparing the virtual version to the real version stunts. <laughs> so we're going to jump right into it with our first shot here coming down the main road leading into the farm and uh, it looks pretty darn good if I may say so myself. Here's another shot of the silos at the main farm. Do a little pan for you here. So as you see a little artistic license has been taken in the map. I do see some John Deere tractors there, but this really caught my eye. My friend DeQuenzi actually gave me one of these, and it's a uh, grass harvesting machine, so we'll be using that. And here's the front of the store, another view of the road over here, coming a little closer, and a farm all tractor, so we're going to have to add one of those in as well. Got the delivery vans out there. And I wouldn't want to be this guy. <laughs> he got caught napping. Here's the back of the barn. So you see there that uh, a little bit of uh, adjustment has been taken in this area here. There's a fine line between making it super realistic and having it kind of accommodate um, for everyone that wants to play the map. And uh, that being said, as we're panning through the pictures here, I'm just going to let them go. All these facilities that you see here, they raise cattle and cattle only. But to make the map more well-rounded and interesting for everyone, he's had to use some of those buildings uh, to do uh, sheep and chickens. So that was the chicken building that you saw right here. And we got a gentleman driving down the road here. Looks like he's stopped to do something. <laughs> Looks like he's got his uh, grass conditioner there, his grass cutter. I don't know why he stopped in the middle of the road. Maybe he's letting the Google car pass by. Not quite sure, but uh, nice shot there. Beautiful area of the country. That's uh, Maryland, and I'm about four or five hours from there. Pretty close, but too far to drive just for ice cream. <laughs> so that's about it as far as uh, the real comparison goes. Like I said, it's pretty much confined to that main road, but what about the map itself? So I prepared a little presentation for you in the form of an overlay in Photoshop here. So uh, we can kind of overlay it over the area that he really focused on the most. The rest of the map to the right is kind of open to his interpretation, but he just kind of really zoomed in on the uh, main farm area itself. So that's what we're doing here. And I'm just going to line this up a little bit better. And you can see already the field to the left, top left, it's field number seven, the one that looks like a letter U with the bushes going through it. The trees <laughs> look like bushes at this height. But that's cocked off to the right, whereas the uh, game version is totally straight horizontal. And then you have the little watering area down here that you saw on the sheep farm. So that's really there, even though this is a cattle yard in real life. But, you know, he had to kind of, again, accommodate people with different gameplay style tastes and incorporate the other animals into the game. So um, some of the other facilities gave way to the sheep and the chickens. You see here that big long building, that's for the chickens. And then as we kind of fade in and out here a little bit, you can see that that field over to the right that had the wavy lines through it. Um, that's quite a bit off, but generally it's still there. And part of it has to do with the scaling of the map, and it could be me uh, with the overlay itself. But I gotta say, for somebody that most likely did this freehand, eyeballing a picture, pretty darn impressive to say the least. And if you weren't doing this kind of comparison, you wouldn't probably know the difference anyway. You'd get on there and you'd be like, oh wow, I saw pictures on the website, here we are, South Mountain Creamery. You recognize it right away. And speaking of the website, here we are. I'm going to leave a link down in the description and you can come over here and uh, thumb through all the photographs they have on there. They show all the buildings and all about the farm and how they make their ice cream and so forth and so on. Got that old Ford fire truck out there. Picture inside the creamery. That fridge looks like it needs a little bleach. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a pretty interesting sight. And that song that you hear inside of the store on the map, that's their real song that they had made uh, for their business. So let's go ahead and move on over to the next segment. All right, so this is where you get uh, loaded into the map. 
And I thought in this segment, I would show you a comparison of some of the things that I've done to kind of tweak things versus the original version of the map. Now there's nothing wrong with the original version of the map whatsoever. And I've explained this in previous videos. I do it because, well, I guess to a certain extent it's a compulsion. Second, um, I have a little hobby. If I see like static models or something that I think are really cool and think, wow, I'd like to have a working mod of that, then I'll go and search for the equivalent of that static model. And if I don't find an identical match, then I'll start reskinning and tweaking it to kind of look like it. So that's what I've done here with a few things. And I also changed up the dealership a little bit and a couple of other things to show you just to suit my style of gameplay and sometimes the needs I have to fulfill a story in my Let's Plays. So I hope you're going to enjoy this part here. So I didn't do anything to this building here. This is the mechanic shop, but uh, I wonder if you notice this if you play the map. Inside is a car lift in there, and usually they're static, but this one actually works. So that's pretty awesome, unlike my basketball skills. <laughs> so this shed over here on the main road behind the barn, I was going to make this um, the milk pickup point. I was going to put the milk tanks in here and have the placeable milk fill triggers set up in front of them, but I couldn't get the triggers to place close enough. So I've done an alternative placement somewhere else, and I'll show you that later on the map. But I was kind of surprised that a map that's focused so much on ice cream and milk has it automatically sell at midnight. I suspect it has to do with scripting because it's available for both PS4 and consoles. I figure while we're neandering around here, I'd hop the fence and show you where the water is for your animals. And that's right over here in the pond. So that's the only water source that I know of on the map. Um, and I'll show you, I've kind of added my own, but that's where you put it in. And so that's why there's water in there. And there's where your wool comes. And then this is kind of where I started tweaking the little things. I took away some of the trucks out front and I put one of the vans back here and took off the wheel and put boards under it. And then there's this nice uh, storage shed over here, or uh, storage port. And the road was already back here. But I found that this lot down here was very unlevel. And, you know, the ground was kind of at an angle when I placed the building. So I had to relevel all of this. And then we, here's our farm all tractor with the wagon over here. And we've got our farmer's market set up over here, ready for our roadside customers. And we're going to be bringing fruit down here from the greenhouse in our Model A tractor, and here's the real life version right down the street from my house, playing in the corner for you. So we use our Model A to cart bales around, and uh, I have it set up maybe to do uh, a hay ride in the fall. So we'll have our people on there. So here's one of the static uh, Viz models that he used on the map. And then here's the Zill that I kind of reskinned to look just like that one. Even uh, got my retro milkman in the back there. <laughs> Now, the fire hydrants that you see around the map, I put water triggers on them, and then I kind of skinned up this case tractor to look like the static version on the bottom picture there. Let's jump over to the dealer. So, as you see in the lower right corner, that's the traditional Fent dealer. Oh, and my Viper tractor fell off the ramp, but uh, I reskinned it to look like a Challenger dealership. Put Challenger flags out there, and then a couple of uh, Fents out here, just a tip of the hat and then put the Challenger sign up there under the Agco and put out some in-game models and then did the same thing inside and put up pictures on the wall to reflect the new brand and I just feel like uh, this is what you'd find more in America and of course we got the X edition but he did a really nice job on the store like I said all I did was color it and change the flags but uh, being that this is a rural area, they kind of also sell a little bit of everything. And there's your loaner vehicles. When your tractor's being worked on, you can take a bicycle home, and build yourself a sandwich, and uh, wait for your tractor to be fixed. <laughs> maybe buy an air compressor and a jack, maybe a lawnmower. So what I, another thing I want to show you is across the street on the side of the dealership, he has a lot that he's allocated for placeables. And, uh, so this is a nice big lot, and I thought I'd show you what I did with it. You don't have to just plunk down a shed and a tractor. You can put your greenhouses out here, and I've got the beekeeping houses in back of those to simulate, you know, natural colonization. And then I've got the honey milk factory that's going to be built right over here. And then I got some fruit trees lining the verge on the side of the road here. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun playing this here. 
And then jumping back to the main farm, that's the original static non-functioning milk tanks that you see right here. And then down over here, I duplicated one and I place it over the top of the placeable milk trigger. And then of course you're going to need a suitable vehicle to cart your goods off to market. So we have the uh, Mac Cow Edition that I did up and uh, the Universal Trailer to match. <laughs> well, let's jump over to the sawmill. So over on the right, amongst all those piles of logs, is where you'll sell your lumber. But if we come down over here, you see this clearing over here that I made. This was before all woods. I have the Marhu sawmill in here to make boards for the honey milk factory. And some wood chip storage over here to keep extra wood chips. <laughs> and then uh, the storage uh, shed over here to house the boards until I'm ready to ship them down. And then back here, the carpenter shop. And he's going to need boards to build the beehives. And uh, this is a little storage shed to put the truck and the beehives. And then here's the machine shop. And uh, this JCB is a New Holland that I reskinned to look like a JCB. And this is the modded New Holland. Uh, the counterway on the back. But I made the inside a little bit sporty as well. <laughs> now down over here on the right is where you would come in. That's the entrance proper. And then here's what it looked like before. I started digging into it. So right down here next to Mother Earth, that's a sell point. Um, you can see to the left it says market. Well, right over yonder, I took out a piece of fence and a whole bunch of trees and I placed the general sale point for the uh, slow bee pack. And I can sell all the goods that the honey milk factory makes. I've got a fruit stand, drive around the back, sell, and loop out, and off you go. And this is what it all looked like beforehand. All right, so last but not least, I'm not going to take up much more of your time, so I say now, but I have something for you. Because you take your time to come and watch the Eustace Farmer channel videos, and that thrills me to no end, I can't even tell you. So um, I feel that for those that are loyal subscribers, both new and old, I would like to do something special and personal from me. And I have a couple of things in mind that I'm going to be doing, and I'm going to show you one today. So on the left of the screen, you'll see that I've taken the Giants uh, Lizard cargo van, and I've created a South Mountain Creamery Company utility van. And on the right is the real McCoy that sits right out there on the real farm. So I'd like to give this to you guys, and uh, it's something that I've done myself. And uh, although it's very simple and basic, I'm quite proud of it. And uh, it's just part of something that I wanted to do to give back to all of you and say thank you sincerely for being so awesome and for sticking with me all this time. You're also going to see as you're playing the game, which gave me the inspiration to do this, um, there's a static model that's parked over uh, behind the ice cream shop, you know, where they load up the other trucks. So that's sitting over there and I thought, wow, wouldn't it be cool to actually have something that you can drive? So, ta-da, there we are. <laughs> So I branded it up pretty good, and um, like I said, there's no IC or anything special like that. It actually takes a lot of blender work to make IC. you got to go in there and tear apart the mod and cut off the parts that you want to have moving. So it's a lot of work. But you can throw your beehives in there, some pallets, or whatever else you can jam in there and cart it around, or use it as general transportation, just to immerse yourself a little bit more in the map. Now, how can you get a hold of this? Well, here's where some of you might get a little bit annoyed, but let me explain why I'm doing this. Down in the description, you're going to see a link to our Discord channel, SGS, Simulation Gaming Society. It's founded by myself, my great friend Doug Sorley, and equally great friend Grizzly Bear Sims. Um, it's a free service, and it works out great. So I'm going to have links to any mods that I create, I'm going to have those mods in our uh, special room in our Discord channel, and you can get it by coming on over and joining up. And you're going to get other benefits too. First and foremost, I strongly believe that you're going to come in contact with some awesome people. We have awesome members. Um, up to this point, we've had actually no trouble at all. We have uh, our friend D. Coleman. He's the moderator in there. 
and uh, it's been like Mayberry in there. It's not a hard job at all because we haven't had any troublemakers and we don't want them. <laughs> so if and when they do crop up, we deal with it like lightning immediately. So we don't put up with any of that mess. So you're not going to get a whole bunch of drama and trouble in there. But you're going to meet a lot of great people. You're going to see me and uh, Zorley in there trading insults back and forth. I love the guy. He's a great friend. That's just the kind of people we are together. <laughs> but it's kind of fun to be a fly on the wall when that starts happening. Um, you're also going to come in contact with uh, Doug Zorley's and Grizzly Bear Sims YouTube content. If you haven't discovered them yet, you're going to stumble upon something really awesome. Um, they do a great job with their YouTube. Um, Grizzly Bear Sims right now is taking a bit of a hiatus from YouTube. He's got a very busy career uh, life going on right now, so he needs to take a break with that. But he still puts out um, awesome uh, blog articles. Trains, Planes, and Automobiles is his blog site. I'm going to leave a link for it down in the description. And he does post regular to semi-regular, so um, do sign up for the alerts for that. Uh, especially if you're one that was considering buying that SKRS shifter for truck sim, um, you should read his article on that. And I'm going to tell you right now, don't buy it because if you do, you're going to get duped. They were a shady company and I knew it from the start. That kind of article just put it to light. So great article to read. So the last reason why I'm putting it over there is not because I'm trying to hoard anything that I do, you know, and say, oh, this is so spectacular. You know, it's not. I understand. But nevertheless, I worked really hard on this and one other project that I'm going to be uh, posting a video on probably tomorrow, you're going to see. I worked really hard and I don't want some creep to snap it up, put his name on it, and then put it on share mods or upload it and then get his little payments and kickbacks off of it. I don't think that's right to do with anybody's work. You want to rearrange or edit a map for your own personal use? I don't see a problem with it. The same with any mod. But when you start giving it away or uploading it to make credits or money, that's a huge problem. And I don't want to see it happen to anyone, including myself. So I'm going to ask you, if you do come over, don't join just to get the mod. Because that'll be the last time that happens. Because once I don't see people active, I'll just get rid of you. I'm not going to play that game either. And I'm sorry if I sound harsh. I'm just trying to be clear. <laughs> but um, I want to see you interact and really enjoy the community for what it's meant to be because I truly believe in it. And it's going to be a litmus test because I have other things that I'm looking forward to putting out in the future, including through FS19. I'm going to have an attempt at my first uh, map. So, um, and once my friends at Frontier Design put out an FS19 version of their starter map with all their great uh, textures and lighting and everything, that'll be a great starting point. And I'd like to create a little farm uh, that I've been wanting to do for a long time. So wish me luck on that. <laughs> but this will kind of test the water to see if, hey, am I going to continue and reskin or make mods and maps for my own personal use and just use them in my Let's Plays and share them with close friends? Or am I going to make them available to my subscribers and viewers? Um, so we'll see how it goes. But I sincerely hope you enjoy this one because I truly want you to have it because you guys have been really, truly awesome. I'm so lucky. So until we meet again, my friends, please take great care of yourself, okay? And bye for now. And on your way out, please consider following me on Facebook and Twitter. Join me on Discord by becoming a member of the Simulation Gaming Society. Please give the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends if you liked it, and a thumbs down if you're a big poop head and didn't like it. Please consider subscribing and don't forget to tap that alert bell so you'll be the first to know when I post a new video. Thanks again.